High intensity folks advocate low volumes, typically only one set per exercise. Does the literature support this recommendation? In 2017, a meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues combined the results of 15 studies comparing low to high volume training. Of the 15 studies, 14 had the low volumes groups trained with one set per exercise, while the high volume groups trained with three sets per exercise. It was found high volume was better than low volume for increasing muscle mass. Since 2017, three additional studies published also indicate performing three sets per exercise produces more muscle growth than performing one set. Why is this? It seems the higher volume attained with three sets ultimately stimulates the anabolic pathways within muscle fibers more. Demonstrating this, a 2010 study by Bird and colleagues compared fed state myofibrillar protein synthesis after training with either three or one set of reps to failure on the leg extension with a 70% or one rep max load. Performing three sets resulted not only in a greater fed state myofibrillar protein synthesis amplitude, but also a longer duration versus performing the one set. What about strength adaptations? How do low and high volumes compare for this? For this, we have a 2017 meta-analysis by Ralston and colleagues. They combine 9 studies comparing low versus high volumes for strength. 7 of the 9 studies had the low volume groups trained with only 1 set per exercise, and the high volume groups trained with 3 sets per exercise. It was found strength gains were greater with the high volumes, indicating that 3 sets per exercise produce greater strength than 1 set. So overall, the current literature indicates that one set per exercise does not maximize size or strength gains. We've mentioned how performing three sets per exercise tends to be better than one set for strength and hypertrophy. Yet, performing three sets does not give you three times the more strength and hypertrophy versus performing one set, rather only marginally more gains. Returning to the Ralston and colleagues meta-analysis which found greater strength gains with high volume versus low volume training, the effect size difference was 0.18, which is interpreted as being a trivial difference only. As for the Schoenfeld and colleagues meta-analysis which found greater hypertrophy with high volume versus low volume training, the effect size difference was 0.24, which is interpreted as a small difference only. Now, it's important to remember the studies involved in these analyses largely lasted 12 weeks or less. So these trivial to small gains achieved with three sets versus one set may become more pronounced long term. Finally, and this is a very important point I want to emphasize, it might be possible that some individuals truly grow more with lower volume training versus higher volume training. Remember all the research findings presented thus far are the average results. Such results are not always applicable to an individual. Matter of fact, this study demonstrates this. 16 men and 18 women trained the unilateral leg press and unilateral leg extension with a 7 to 10 rep max load, 3 times per week for 12 weeks. With one leg, subjects trained each exercise with only one set. With the other leg, they trained each exercise with 3 sets. Cross sectional area of the quadriceps was measured before and after the study. The graph shows the individual responses for each participant. The y-axis shows the cross-sectional area increases for the leg that trained with three sets, and the x-axis shows the cross-sectional area increases for the leg that trained with one set. The results show a near 50-50 split, with 50% seeing better gains with three sets per exercise, and the other 50% seeing similar or more gains with one set. The researchers also looked at strength, they averaged out the results from three different strength tests, and the findings were similar, a near 50-50 split. These findings truly surprised me, and if they can be replicated on a larger scale, they might suggest many folks experience no benefit with higher volumes. However, it's essential to remember only 34 subjects were in this study, so it's very difficult to say this exact distribution applies to everyone. Moreover, all these subjects were untrained. There's data showing increasing set numbers in trained individuals benefits hypertrophy, so I'm skeptical these distributions hold true for trained individuals.